Today we're making a junk journal from tatty torn envelopes. It's decorated with pieces of scrap paper, it's cheap and it's really easy to make. So I made up a couple and they look like this. They're held together nice and flat with a closure and I wrapped around with string. You could use pretty ribbon if you wanted to. Each of these has three compartments. So they look like this, one, two and one at the back. And each of these is actually a pocket. So on the front we have a pocket on the right hand side. In the second compartment I've added a pocket at the top and on the back this piece that wraps around actually has a really substantial pocket to hold things in just here. So you could develop this idea yourself, you could add extra pages to write in, to journal in, you could sew those in here and here and you can also change the configuration of this, you could add more sections and you could put them in any order you like. Each of these is made from tatty torn envelopes. So I have used envelopes like this one with a scrabbly edge and I've used envelopes like this and for each I used one larger one like this. And I'm really excited about this project today because it's actually made from junk. I have the process steps for you to make life really easy. These are in Pinterest along with about 25 others. So take a screenshot, follow me on Pinterest, let's make a torn envelope junk journal. This is an incredibly enjoyable junk journal to make because it is actually made of junk. So for this one, I simply used two small used envelopes like this. They have a window in them. They don't have to have a window, but I think that's really pretty when we put something behind. And just note, it's got tatty edges and that's absolutely fine. We can also use envelopes that have got the flap still on it. That's okay too, even if that's tatty like this one. So as well as the two smaller envelopes, at a minimum you want one big one. Now you can have a play, have a go, and I think you will get immersed in this and maybe want to make a bigger one. So I did have a go at a bigger one and I'll show you a bit more what this looks like towards the end. But let's have a go at the straightforward one first. And for that, I just need a few other supplies that have gathered around me. So to make this, you need some glue and I'm using a strong glue, so a stick. I want, whoops, some string for the closure, the little closure in the, the little brad in the middle. And I've got a, a needle to poke the hole. I've also got my awl. I've got a hole punch, which you don't have to use again, but I'm going to use that just to make the pockets look pretty, both the side one and the top one here. It's helpful if you've got a craft knife. I'll show you how to use that. And of course I need some paper. So I've grabbed just a whole mix of different papers. I've got book pages in here, off cuts. I've got a couple of digital images. I've got an old essay from university, scrapbook paper, just, just all sorts of loveliness. And I'm going to use that to collage on the envelopes, which is actually where we begin. So I'm going to make one just like this with the pocket right at the start being on the right and then I'll move on to one where the pocket is at the top. I'll show you exactly what to do. Don't forget you've got the process steps as well. And I'll also make and then bring together the back and show you how that comes over so that it protects this. It's really robust. It feels, it feels like luxury and it's made from junk. And then I'll just make the closure and show you how to do the wrap around. So let's begin with that tatty envelope. And what we need to do is add something to the window, collage the front and then collage the back. And I'm going to start with the window, get that done first. And I want an image. Let's show you a couple of the examples from the ones I've made. I really like putting these mushrooms behind. And I think as well, 
that these vintage images look absolutely beautiful. So I think that's that's very pretty too. So to ring the changes, I just grabbed a few that might suit the size. And of course they don't even need to be perfectly well cut out because they're going to go behind the window. That looks really nice, doesn't it? Let's get that. Let's get going. Is that the right way? Oh, there we go. Let's get an image behind that window. Just a little bit of glue on all four sides. And the easiest way I find is to turn it upside down, open this up properly and then just do your best to get it plumb on centre wherever you want it. Uh, it's not that easy without sticking it down. There we go. How about that? I can see beautiful two birds here and a nice bright red one there. And then what I want to do is collage the front and the back. So let's pull out my papers, make a bit of space, have a go at that. So I've got a whole range of collage papers here. Nothing special at all. Some are just tiny little bits from other projects. I've got my brown Amazon packaging that I've coloured with gold paint and splattered offcuts, all sorts. I vote that we just dive in and start filling the space. What shall we have to begin with? That looks interesting, doesn't it? So maybe I could go, I go up the side, it's rather busy, next to there. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? How about something botanical? Yeah, I like that. So that can go on here. Now we're going to make the front pocket here. Let's just show you exactly what we're doing. We're going to decorate here, we're going to decorate on the back and we're going to add some extra pieces inside so that it can have a hinge and join the next one. And this junk journal is all about putting something in your first compartment, your first pocket, so that it is ready with a hinge to join the second one. And that's what we need to remember. So colour covering in the front, that's really easy. But I need the left hand side of this envelope to remain open. So I can always slit it again with my knife or I can just remember to not put paper on so that it's covered up. So let me just show you. When I put paper on the front or the back, I want this left hand side here to be open. And if I do happen to fold paper around it when I'm collaging, I'm just going to slit it down with a knife. So let's get my glue and do a bit of work on this. Get that to the left of the birds. I think that botanical looks great. What I'm going to do today is some collage just to give you some ideas and show you maybe the method. But I've also got a little bit prepared and I've got some already done and that will speed up, I think, the steps in this so that you can make your torn envelope journal really easily and not have to sit and watch the bits that, you know, maybe you don't need to see twice. So that looks great. I need to fill in some space at the top. So maybe some book page there. Literally just my little off cuts. Make sure I'm on camera. I can go there. And what we're doing already is just starting to cover up some of this twiddly mess. So I'll carry on here. What have we got? Maybe a bit, a bit of that. I've gone through so much of this collage paper. I never thought I'd use quite so much of it. So I'll use my under over technique, trying to leave some of the edges not stuck down so I can go either over or under another piece if I want to. And if I've got a gap like that, it doesn't matter, I'll cover it with some extra bits, we'll just do some filling in. That's coming along nicely. Bit of plain, this is from a 
would work well there. This is from some vintage music paper that I have. Maybe that actually could... That can go there and can just go over the top so I've got more of a tatty edge to show than a straight one. I did see a little image. I don't know if I need it. Tempted to use it. It's competing with the birds. It's better up there. I think I'll put it on top left. Just a little mushroom. Just felt like I'd have a little bit of a mushroom theme. I don't want that over really, don't I? That could go there. Just fill in here and those gaps. Let's work up that side. And as I say, I'll shortcut the process when we come to the other elements, the other pieces in this torn envelope journal. But I thought it'd be good just to show you some of the basics in one of them. That's a nice piece. Get that down. Quite like that. Maybe just a little bit to cover up a space over there. Like that. I'm not worried about the straight line here because I can do something with washi tape on there. Have I covered up all the areas? Yes, I think I have. I'll just go round and push down any of those pieces that are just in the air. I'm going to do something very quickly to give that a border. I can't resist. I'm pulling out some of my pencils that reflect the colours in the collage. I'm just really quickly going to give that a bit of definition like that. These are watercolour pencils. I find that if I leave these things I don't have the same ideas later on so I have to grab my thoughts in the moment and just do whatever I'm thinking. A bit of red in that which is nice. There we go. So I've got the front done and what I need to do is the back and on this envelope I need to keep the top sealed so I don't need to use my knife at all on the top but I will need to open up on the right hand side so it's open here on the left as you can see I've covered it up a bit at the moment you can't see it but I will need to open this side here with a knife but I think that's going to be fairly easy to get at. So I think what I'll do is move to collaging the back. I tend to go a bit faster with this. Let's have, let's have a bit of book page just to get going. That's a really nice one. Lovely colour this. And every one of these is going to be different, which is so lovely, so nice and so satisfying. I'll do a bit more overlapping of the pieces of collage than I might normally do and the reason for that is it means the finished object is that much more robust and despite it being made of junk it has that luxury feel. So something there, maybe I might use a big one on there, a big mushroom. I need something interesting down here, what have we got in our pile? I don't want to use too many digitals. I need to use, oh, how about a bit of music paper? What can we do with that? Yep, that can go on. Let's cover up down here. That's good, isn't it? Breaks it up. that. I'll need a bit of colour. Maybe a bit of scrapbook paper here. That could tuck under. So here's my under over technique. Don't seal your piece of collage paper all the way to the edge. Give yourself a bit of opportunity to push things underneath and then you get that beautiful rough edge. That can go on there. I 
comes together quite quickly. Get that down. And I'm going to do the same again, I think. Just add a bit of interest. So I've got a big image here. Nice strong focal point. Do we need it there? Where do we think? Actually, maybe up there. That's good. I'll just frame it again. Otherwise it's dangling a bit. Pull out the colours in the image. Scribble around it. I like to use two or three colours. I probably need a bit of brown. It's a nice chocolate colour. These are my Arteza watercolour pencils. They sit upright on my desk. They're not greedy for space and therefore they're accessible and get used. There we go. A bit of water to release the pigment. It just makes the page a little bit arty. How about that? Make it really messy. I think that adds. And I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of washi tape and do some damage with that. Got some gorgeous gold. Let's give that a bit of magic. That's nice. Let's use the bits. Maybe balance it down here. I just need to trim around. So, for the front of our journal, we need make a bit of space. We need access on the right, and we need this side to be open so that I can have, add a hinge and a flap. So I will need to open up the other side down here. So I need my knife. Yeah, I'm going to trim off these elements first. Maybe think about which I want to fold over. So. It's just. I like to do it by tearing. Because you get a more interesting edge than a cut edge. means this extra bit here I can glue and just bring up here it just adds that little extra element and then I want to just tidy up this side what I will do is see if any of these little scrappy bits can be just can be just glued in there's a few little thought processes on this one as you go through it. I couldn't write down everything in the process steps. But as you go through it, you'll probably think, hmm, what can I do about that? And just make a judgment, make a decision what you want to do. None of these little steps of tidying are a make or break. So it's not going to ruin the project. But you might think, hmm, I'll just have a go at turning those in and making it tidier now and also a bit stronger. Looking good. Do the same with the, this side. And then I'm going to take this spare piece and mitre it at the corner. So just take a bit off and I'm going to fold it inside. So remember we said we want this side to be open. So let me fold it. Give it a bit of glue. And this adds strength as well. And just tuck that in. So what have we got? Here's the front with some spare bits that need dealing with, but I've got a tidy left-hand side, which is open. I've got a right-hand side that needs opening. I can do that now, and then I can tidy up these pieces too. I think what I'll do is I'll take my knife, I'll make a hole, go in, and I've got going, come out, Use the hole and then just open this up. Beware your hands. So maybe what I need to do is turn it over and go away. Just going down and opening that up. So we end up with a great big opening to the left, a 
great big opening to the right. I'm just going to take these spare bits now, glue them and tuck them in. So now I've got collage on the front with the window, I've got collage on the back, I've got an opening to the right and to the left. So I want to add this little circle, I just think it adds something, and this is the front of the journal. So I'll measure halfway down here, make a little mark with a pencil, and then I'll just use my hole punch to take a little bit out. It's probably just a bit of a bigger ask for me to guess. There's the halfway, I'll go to about there. I think I'll punch a bit less than half a circle. I don't need it to be all that way in. Maybe about there. I'm just being careful not to clip the acetate. I don't want that to be impaired. And the other thing I might do at this stage, it's a choice, is just cover up some of the internal here on this envelope so I don't see it. So I'll just take a, a strip of paper and cover that up. So it's just a little detail if you want to do that. I'll get some glue on this. And I'm just going to tuck that inside here so that it's making the edge of this pocket just a bit prettier, particularly because it's at the front of our journal. To pull it all the way to the front so I don't see those blue diagonal patterns. I think that looks so much better. And now what we need to do is add a flap and a hinge to this left hand side that we'd opened up. We'd opened this up with the knife. So for that I am going to use a book page. I want something that's relatively strong but it certainly doesn't need to be cardstock. I will make a flap to begin with. So we're on this step making the one, two, three, the fourth bullet of step two. Add a flap to the back left interior of the decorated envelope. So add a flap, which means taking a piece of paper just a long piece of paper, fold that in half and we're going to make that sit inside here like that. I've not got it absolutely all the way to the end, that doesn't matter. And that's going to be my carry forward piece so that I can attach it to the interior of the next compartment of the next envelope that we add. So this is what we need to remember to do before we close this up. So I've got a piece of paper that's folded in half and that's going to be attached and it needs to be attached to the back. So I need glue on the inside left here. Let's get that going. Glue on the inside and then tuck that inside the left hand opening of your envelope. Try and butt it up to the edge of your envelope and then just press that down. Maybe just bring it up a bit, it's not quite in the centre. We want centre-ish. And that's a really important flap to help us join these envelopes together. So you can see how it's coming together. Access to the right, a flap ready to join the next envelope. And now what we can do is add a little hinge inside here just to be able to close it all together and make it into a pocket. So I need another piece of paper for that and again it doesn't really matter what it is so I could can even use the same book page, it's just a children's encyclopedia I think. So just take a piece of paper, fold that in half. You probably want a couple of centimetres width when it's felt folded in half just to give you enough my bone folder. Save my fingers. Just to give you enough space to put glue on it and it for ha to have the traction when the glue dries to bring it all together. So that goes also inside. It's now on top of that flap that we'd added and 
It sits snugly and neatly, so get it as tidy as you can. And then all I'm going to do is add glue on the top of that hinge. I wonder if it might be easier if I poke inside with this. Rub my glue on and then squidge that down. And that gives us our front of our journal. It's the hardest part. I've got my access here and I've got a flap ready to join the next one. So this will pay itself forwards, be ready to attach. So we're ready to make the second compartment. And for this one, just to ring the changes, I've put the opening to the pocket right at the top here. So we need the same envelope, the same size as we used last time. And all we need to do to begin with, as it says in our process steps, is decorate inside the window and collage the front and the back. And then we need to open the top with a knife and punch a half circle. Is that too much all in one go? I've speeded up the process today by doing a little bit of collage on one of those envelopes. So I took one of these and I've decorated on the front and on the back. And in fact, on this one, I had a bit of fun splatting it with paint. I've used a similar beautiful mushroom element here, some vintage papers. I've added a little label. This is a Shakespeare, a page from a Shakespeare play, Henry the Sixth. I've got some washi tape. I like this little zigzag. I think that goes a bit whimsical with the mushroom. So I have the front and back done and I've actually already opened up the top, which would have been the side, the side of our envelope. I just thought this would speed things up a bit and help us get through this productively. So what we need to do is add the the half circle shape at the top as opposed to on the right hand side. So why don't we do that? I'll just do a bit of measuring. Five and a half doesn't have to be perfect. And it's easier to do this when the side is open than waiting till you've done all of your sealing up. Take that out, that looks nice. And as you can see, I've already added just a little bit of decorative paper behind so that that's what you see when you look through this little half moon. We have added the punched half circle. What we need to do on the left hand side, it has been opened, is add the same flap as we did before to the interior of our envelope. So why don't I try and find that same book page again? So I need to add a flap. Fold that in half just to make a flap shaped piece of paper from a book page and I need to glue on the inside making my flap always remembering to create our flap before we do any sealing up that's the key to this to think ahead so that each of the compartments sort of pays itself forwards by offering up a flap to go inside the next envelope that's really the key I'll we'll get that on there that's my flap tuck it in as neat as possible and now I just need to add a hinge in the same way so that this can open but I don't want to seal it yet I do not want to seal it yet because I want this to be able to tuck inside so let me add my hinge okay, just use another bit of book page I think this is too long that takes some off I'm going to take it a little bit shorter than the height of the envelope just to make life easy when I'm tucking it inside. Fold it over to make my hinge and get some glue down one side like that. And this is going to go inside that way so that it helps this be a pocket. So let's get that in. And you can see how a little bit of robustness is being added through all these various elements and layers. I'm going to put glue on that 
I get up to there. I'll use my liquid glue because I've got a pointy nozzle at the end just to get in there. And I don't want to seal it yet because what I want to do is take this that we made before that's got its flap. I want to tuck that in and seal that inside. And let me just show you on the points. That is step four. We're going to use the flap from the first envelope to tuck inside the second, glue it in and then seal it together. So I possibly need a bit more glue on there actually. I've predominantly used the stick glue because I didn't want this to be too watery in general. So that's going to go that way. So that needs to go in there. And then I need a bit more glue just to bring it together. Just tuck it in. So now I just need glue down here, down the final, down the final side of the flap that we borrowed from the first envelope and that brings it together. So shall we see if that works? I've got a side pocket and I've got a top loading pocket and just a bit of a tear. That just needs a bit of a bit more love and affection. A top loading pocket and I've still got a flap to pay it forward for the third compartment so it works. What do we think of it so far? So for this project today we're now at the stage where we can add the third element and that is the larger of those envelopes that I showed you to begin with. And it's really, really easy. This is probably easier than the previous two steps. I did say I would just show you the second journal that I'd had a go at when I was playing with these. And if you're feeling like you want to experiment, I made this one with a couple of the top loading pockets from the type of envelopes you've just seen. I also just included a couple of junk mail envelopes and I just used a flap and hinge type mechanism again. I just glued them onto each other. So you can see that these have got access all the way down the left hand side. So these are just junk mail envelopes that have been incorporated into the very similar or the same journal. The method is very similar and all I'm going to do now is add this back flap which gives rigidity and protection and real robustness and weight to the project. So for that, on this little one, we need that larger envelope. And what I've done, again, to speed things up, is I took one of those larger envelopes, I simply added an element behind the acetate window. I've collaged over it, just with some lovely pieces of paper. On this one, I've added another little mushroom. These are from Klee Blatt Creations, get that right over on Instagram, she has an Etsy shop, and she's got some beautiful papers on a mushroom theme. I think it's called something like Time About Mushrooms. I'll leave um, details in the description box down below. So I've used that, and then I've also added some papers, I've added some book page and some gold splatters. There's some more of the mushroom to the back. So this is one of those larger envelopes. So it started life just like this, you can see, like that. I've decorated the front and back. I actually took glue because it needed a bit on here, just along this area here, and I glued it down. And then I took a knife and I opened it up just to make it be what we needed. So we need it to have access on the left hand side, but keep it closed on the right, which is the bottom of the envelope. So a pretty one to start with, I think. And what we need to do with this is, first of all, add our closure and then we can bring it all together. So let's work out where the closure needs to be. We want it to be able to wrap around and obviously we still want to get into the pocket at the back. So we want it to come all the way around here, probably takes up about a quarter to a third of the, the width over here. And we want this closure to be quite robust and allow us to wrap the string around 
So quite a lengthy piece of string and it holds it flat. It's kind of wallet size, isn't it, when it's done? So to find where it needs to go, I think the easiest thing is to just slip this inside to begin with. Don't glue it. And then sit the top two envelopes where you want them to be. Hold on to this and just sort of gradually nudge it round the corner so that we can see that we want the closure to be about there. So if I take that off, I can see that I want the closure to be along here into about there. I'm not going to go through that little picture. So the closure, the brad, is about two to two and a half centimetres in. If I go a bit more, go to about there. I'm going to use my awl to make a hole. Beware the fingers. Just push that through. Then I need one of my homegrown little closures, just my circles. I've got some gorgeous gold and bronze on this. Make a hole in that. Pick a lovely little brad. Oh. And not too tiny. Yeah, I'm not going to go for the smallest one. I think the gold just works so well with the rest of the junk theme, the aesthetic on this. I absolutely love it. I'm just going to push that through the hole, splay open the little legs and for good order what I will do is just take a piece of washi tape, let's be extravagant because it's handy, get some of my gold foil on and just put that over the flaps just to keep them down. How easy was that? And I think that means we can put the flap in and glue it in. So we've added the closure and we can now move on to step six, which is using the flap from the second envelope to tuck inside this third one. And we can glue that in to the front inside. So I want my flap that's sitting here. I want some glue on that. It's a nice big flap. So you can see Larger pieces of paper, larger flaps are going to give you more strength when you bind these components together. That's going to be glued to the front here, not to the back, to the front. Don't seal this. Just tuck it in. Nudge that in. I'm just going to... Fold that over to help me get it in a good place. That's a really nice, tidy seal there. And now I just need to add some string to the closure. Maybe give that a bit of a squish down just to help it stay. I'm going to get some string around this. I need a fair bit. I think I need a good one, two, three and a bit of that. Catch it underneath. If you'd like to make a junk journal with your vintage papers then check out my video where I show you exactly how including all the folding to make a beautiful signature inside. I hope to see you soon.